All right, well, today we're going to do stereochemistry. Isn't that exciting? Yes, it is. Stereochemistry um, can be a somewhat difficult concept, um, but I'll use every trick I know to try to make it work. Um, before we do that, remember I was telling you about this little tutorial. Well, um, it is now an extra credit for you, okay? One more time, what you do, um, this is the alkane nomenclature on Blackboard, right here there. When you click New Problem, you'll either get a structure or a name. And depending on which one you get, you either draw a structure or input a name. So here we have... A simple alkane, very simple. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine carbons. That makes it non -A. And I got it right. Okay? So you do this ten times. You get it right ten times. <clears throat> then, like magic, this will appear. Email your instructor, it says five points, well that's not right, it's ten. Or five problems, and it says ten. Uh, it also says enter your email address, don't do that either. And don't change this. Um, this goes to a special mailbox on my computer, and um, that way I know that you have done this. And instead of your email, simply put your name. Okay? Then you click Submit, it goes, and you just made 10 points towards your first exam. Oh, right. So since there's like three different times, you'll get 30 points? No. No. <laughs> no. No, that, that would be really nice, but that one doesn't work. <laughs> So, all right, so make sure you do this. Um, all of these things uh, need to be done before the uh, first exam. Yeah. All right. And this is labeled what on Blackboard? It's on Blackboard. It's a link called How Can You Know Me? Something like that. Okay. It's on the Blackboard list. It's on Blackboard. Okay. Well, speaking of drawing structures of simple compounds, go ahead and draw the structure for bromocyclopentane. Now, that really is simple, isn't it? It's going to be a five membered ring, and we're simply going to stick a bromine on it. We could just do it like this. Cyclopentane with a bromine, right? But everyone realizes by now that this carbon here, in fact all the carbons, but this guy is tetrahedral. And so in real life, we could have this thing drawn this way, with the bromine coming towards us, or this way, with the bromine going back. Right? Are those two the same compound? Well, let's see. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> this is a uh, really neat little program called JMOL. Um, you cannot only um, model compounds, but we can move them in real time. So isn't that cute? So this is bromocyclopentane with a bromine back, and this is bromocyclopentane with a bromine forward, right? So what I'm going to do here, if I turn that off, is just fiddle with this a bit. 
And by George, I believe you can see that those are, in fact, exactly the same compound. Right? Both of them are bromine back now, hydrogen forward. No problem. That's kind of what we thought would happen. All right, well, that was fun. <clears throat> Thing finally wakes up. Here we go. Let's do another one. Draw a cis one bromo three chloro cyclopentane. Cis. Well, this isn't really challenging either, is it? Because we're going to have a five number ring. Can have a bromine and a chlorine, and their relative geometry, stereochemistry, is going to be cis. So we could draw it this way if we used wedges. And remember with these, this means that the bromine is coming towards us, chlorine is coming towards us. We could also draw it this way with the bromine going back and the chlorine going back, right? Now, when we did simple cycle alkanes, I said, you can do either one. That's fine. Here are the two um, in models. Again, rolling forward, chlorine forward, rolling back, chlorine back. Everyone happy with that? Let's go back to our J model. And I've pretty much got the, well, come on, pretty much got the same thing here. Bromine is forward, hydrogen back, chlorine forward, hydrogen back, chlorine back, bromine back, and the hydrogens are forward. Everyone happy with that? So I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the other. I'll grab one of these guys, and I'll just kind of rotate it so that we can line them up. Uh, that's not working. Scooch this around, maybe. No. No. In fact, I could sit here all day and play with this, and it's fun to do. But there is absolutely no way that I can arrange this so that these two superimpose on each other. There is absolutely no way. These two are totally different compounds. I'd show this in the very simplest way here. Let's just draw a derivative of methane with a bromine, a chlorine, and an iodine on it. Now, if we drew this out flat, it would look like this, right? But we know, of course, that it's not flat. It is tetrahedral. So I'm going to draw it like this and to simulate, as best as I can draw, a tetrahedron. <clears throat> the uh, chlorine and the iodine are in the plane of the screen here. Hydrogen is back, and the bromine is forward. Right. What I've done is I've drawn this guy. Again, here's the chlorine and the iodine. 
hydrogen back, bromine forward. Now I could have drawn this differently, couldn't I? I could have drawn it like this. Bromine and chlorine in the plane instead of iodine. Iodine forward, hydrogen back. And that would look like this. Again, these two in the plane, forward and back. Let's go back to j -Mol one more time. <clears throat> Here I have bromine and iodine in the plane, bromine and iodine in the plane, chlorine is coming forward, hydrogen back, hydrogen back, flowing forward. Okay? But let me rotate this so the iodine comes over here so it will look just like this one. carefully as I can. <clears throat> so now the iodine is in the plane, but by George, the chlorine is back, isn't it? Hydrogen is forward. Once again, these two guys are not superimposable at all. In fact, if you look at it, well, Straighten it up here a little bit. Put it back the way it was. There, I think you can see it there. If this was a mirror separating these two, this guy and this guy would be mirror images, wouldn't they? <clears throat> if you look at this in the mirror, chlorine would be forward. This would be coming forward. This is vertical, and this is going away. These two things are mirror images. And they are not at all superimposable. I've got the old-fashioned way to do it here, too. <clears throat> there are four little different colored balls. They all have a red, a green, a yellow, and a purple. If I try to line these up, it doesn't work, does it? But if I looked at them this way, one would be the mirror image of the other. If we have a tetrahedron and we have four different groups attached, <clears throat> we will have an internal asymmetry. Internal asymmetry simply means that one molecule is the mirror image of the other, and they are not superimposable. This is my version of a mirror. And hopefully you can see hydrogen reflect, those reflect, <clears throat> the, those and those are the same, but they are in fact mirror images. When we have a carbon like this, we say that this is a chiral center. Chiral is a word for handedness. So you want to, this is your right hand and your left hand. They pretty much have the same number of fingers and stuff, but you can't ever superimpose them, can you? See? <laughs> when we have a pair of stereoisomers like this that are mirror images, we refer to them as enantiomers. The term enantiomer refers to a molecule 
and its mirror image. All right. This is a little movie. Again, here's a Carl Harbin. Mirror drops down. Hopefully you can see from this fancy movie that these are in fact mirror images, not superimposable. Again, they are a pair of enantiomers. All right, any questions? Interesting concept, isn't it? <clears throat> Let's look at a couple molecules here. This is um, bromochloromethane. And this is the amino acid alanine. Uh, here we have two hydrogens. We have uh, bromine and a fluorine. Here we have a hydrogen, an amino group, methyl group, and a carboxylic acid. If we drew this with wedge bonds, we could draw it this way. Hopefully you can see the two hydrogens are coming towards us and the bromine and the chlorine are going away. If we did the same thing here, methyl is going away, hydrogen is going back, and the nitrogen and the carboxylic acid are coming towards us. <clears throat> As we put this guy in motion, hopefully you can see the stereochemistry a little bit better. Again, these are <clears throat> coming towards us. Now they're rotating back. If we rotate this one, the same sort of thing. You see methyl and hydrogen are back when it stops. And these guys are towards us. <clears throat> this compound is not a chiral center. It is superimposable on its mirror image. And that's because this guy has a plane of symmetry. Now, being able to look at something and pick out a plane of symmetry is an important part of understanding stereochemistry. By a plane of symmetry, we mean an internal reflective plane. We can drop it straight down here. Again, we would split these two, and these two would be the reflection of each other. If a molecule has an internal plane of symmetry, it cannot be chiral. This guy, we have four different things around it. If we try to put a mirror right down the middle, we can split those guys, but the amino group is certainly not the reflection of the carboxylic acid. This is a chiral center, this carbon here, and of course this one is not. Let's just expand upon this a little bit. <clears throat> this is simply bromomethane, and it has three hydrogens and a bromine. And as it rotates, you can see that if we do a full rotation, they are absolutely the same compound. No question about it, right? Here we have bromochloro, and two hydrogens. <coughs> this guy is supposed to start rotating. There it goes. And as it does, well, here I am. This is my own name. I'm rotating it um, in JMOL, and I captured it. But as I rotate the thing around and spin it a little bit, you can again see when we get back here, this and this are exactly the same compound. However, if we have four different things, like this, 
as this rotates, this starts off a mirror image. When we rotate this around, we're going to wind up with exactly the opposite of what we started with here. These two are completely mirror images. When you have four things, there must be four different things around the carbon, we call that a chiral carbon. The relationship between it and its mirror image, we call those enantiomers. Now when I say four things, they only have to be different. Not at the first carbon, but different um, as far out as you want to go. Here we have a hydrogen, a bromine. This side, we have a butyl group. On this side, we have a pentyl group. And so this is a chiral center. One of the games we play is we look at molecules, decide if they have a chiral center. And if they do, we put a little asterisk next to it. That indicates that this is, in fact, a chiral carbon. Let's do this for this and this compound. Look at them, please. Decide if they have a chiral center and put a little asterisk Our first one here, let's look at this carbon. On this side, we have three CH2s going down to hit our carbonyl. On this side, we have one CH2, and then we hit our carbonyl. We have a methyl group, and we have a hydrogen. This is a chiral center. This guy, we have a hydrogen, we have a methyl. Going down here, we have two CH2s to hit our carbonyl. Going down here, we have two CH2s to hit the carbonyl. This is not a chiral center. If we put a mirror down the middle, this half of the molecule and this half would reflect. Now remember, the methyl is supposed to be coming straight towards us, hydrogen straight back, so those actually reflect too. Because we have a plane of symmetry, we say that this molecule is achiral. Achiral means it is not chiral. This has a chiral center, this does not. Uh, let's just look at a different rendition here. <clears throat> Here's a little uh, J. Mall movie. And as it rotates, you can see the plane of symmetry is going to be right here through the carbonyl, up through the hydrogen and the methyl. Straight up and down like that. This molecule is chiral, and this one is achiral. Okay? All right, well, let's look at some molecules and decide if they are chiral or not. If they are chiral, indicate the chiral centers with an asterisk.
first molecule here, let's start out with this guy. We have a hydrogen, but we have two methyls. If you have two of anything, it is not a chiral center. That's a CH2, two hydrogens, no. But this guy, we have a hydrogen, don't we? Going up here, we have a double bond. Going down here, we don't. So this path and this path are different. There are four different things, and this is chiral. That is the chiral center. The molecule itself is chiral. This guy here, CH2. CH2, CH2, this is a methyl group. But here, we have a hydrogen, fluorine, methyl, and the rest of this. This is a chiral center. This molecule is a derivative of adamantane, it's called. Um, if you look here, this is a six-membered ring, isn't it, in a chair. And we simply tied it around with three more, four more carbons here. <clears throat> There's a chair going up. This is a chair. There's a chair in the back. Um, this is the symmetry associated with diamonds. And we have a methyl group. So go ahead and pick out chiral centers. Well, these are CHs and CH2s. Those don't count, right? <clears throat> if we started with this guy, this goes down to the methyl. That's good. But this half and this half are the same. Here we have a methyl, but this path up here and this path, again, are identical. This has no chiral centers. This molecule is achiral. Let's demonstrate that to <coughs> our mirror plane. And here's a little movie. As it rotates around, so the methyl is back, hopefully you can see the mirror plane straight up and down. Let's see if we can get that to go again. There we go. As it goes around, you can see the perfect symmetry right down the middle of the molecule. And here's our mirror plane. Go ahead and look at these. Our first one here, this is a benzene ring, isn't it? Air ring. Those are all sp squared carbons. Those don't count. Must be an sp cubed carbon. CH2, CH2. Another CH2, but this guy has a methyl, a hydrogen, this half, and a CH2OH. They're different, and that's a chiral center. Over here, we have a tail of CH2, CH3s. This guy has hydrogen, chlorine, this thing, and CH2Br. Two hydrogens here. This is our only chiral center. But shouldn't there be like four things attached to it? There are. Hydrogen, okay. chlorine, CH2Br, and that. Four different things. How about... Methyl cyclopentane. 
Well, we already saw a bromocyclopentane wasn't, right? Because we could rotate it and superimpose it. This is not chiral at all. Once again, if you drew this thing flat, it'd be so much simpler to see, wouldn't it? We can drop a mirror straight down the middle. Again, this half of the molecule is a reflection of that half. Now, all these guys that we've done have had only one chiral center. And there are lots and lots of very interesting organic molecules that have more than one. Here's an example. This is cholesterol. Go ahead and take cholesterol and identify all of the chiral centers. Well, let's start here, where the alcohol is. We have a hydrogen, we have a hydroxyl group, those are different. Here we go back with two CH2s. There's a CH2, but this is an sp squared carbon, right? So that means that this path and this path are different. And this is a chiral center. CH2, CH2, this guy. We have a methyl group. <coughs> this goes down to an sp squared carbon. This goes to a CH2. And this guy goes to a tertiary carbon, doesn't it? Those are all different. This guy has a hydrogen pointing down. And it goes up to this quaternary carbon, a CH2 and a tertiary carbon. They're all different. CH2, CH2, methyl group up, CH2, tertiary carbon, and out here to this carbon attached to the table. This guy has a hydrogen. It has the tail goes back to the quaternary carbon and the CH2. Methyl group, hydrogen, the rest of the tail, the rest of cholesterol. Out here we have two methyls, so it is not a chiral center. Continuing, CH2, CH2. This guy has a hydrogen, Ternary carbon, CH2, tertiary carbon. Hydrogen, tertiary carbon, and CH2, and a different tertiary carbon. This is this half, this is this half. There are a total of eight chiral centers. That means that there are two to the eight possible stereoisomers. These two guys are enantiomers, right? If we have one chiral center, we can have two possible orientations. If we had two chiral centers, we would have two squared or four possible isomers. Here we have eight. We have two to the eight stereoisomers of cholesterol. While 
cholesterol is up there, just take a look at it. It really is kind of a neat molecule. Uh, again, it's built with fused rings. <clears throat> nice simple chair here. And we have what would like to be a chair. There's a double bond. Another chair. These are all cis ring junctions, aren't they? I'm sorry, trans ring junctions, up and down, up and down. Five numbered ring, and here's our tail. There's also a concept <coughs> called a propyl assembly. Um, we're not going to talk much about this. Um, what, what a prochiral center is, means, is that <coughs> if we, um, like this guy is a prochiral center, here's a regular chiral center, but this is called prochiral. It has two hydrogens on it. If we swap one of those hydrogens for something else, we would generate a chiral center. So this has the ability to become chiral if we simply exchange one group. Uh, for example, if we put a chlorine here, this would be a chiral center now. So prochiral, um, again, we're not going to talk much about it. In 235, when you do spectroscopy, um, there are some aspects of NMR that show up prochirality. But again, that's 235. Just so you understand what the term means. Any questions? All right, well, like I said, these two guys are mirror images. If this represented a pure compound, and this was a pure compound, they would obviously have the same molecular weight. They'd have the same composition, the same analysis. They'd actually even have the same melting point. Their chemistry, their reactions with um, other things would be exactly the same. How do we know then that they are actually different? Well, <clears throat> there's something called optical activity. This is how the whole notion was discovered. Optical activity refers to the way the molecule interacts with plane polarized light. We're going to do um, a polarimetry experiment in the lab where we'll actually um, demonstrate this. But this is what a um, old-fashioned polarimeter looked like. <clears throat> you have a light source. As the light comes out, it is not polarized, of course. It's oriented every which way. <clears throat> you take this and you run it through a polarizer. The polarizer only allows one orientation, one plane, to go through. You then run this through your sample. So your sample is in this little vial here. As it does, it will rotate the plane of polarized light. You have an analyzer here. You take it and turn this until you can see the light coming out. The angle that you turn it, called alpha, <coughs> um, is the amount that the thing is rotated. In antimers, will rotate plane polarized light, <clears throat> and they do it in totally opposite directions. That means that this one would rotate it to the right, and this guy would rotate the plane to the left. Now, that's kind of hard to visualize. <clears throat> but, <coughs> If you think about the physics of it a little bit, now this is baby physics, okay? But if you think about the physics, we can describe plane polarized light as having magnetic and electric vectors, okay? Um, if you do a vector sum here, so we're going to add up these two arrows, the resultant would look like this. Remember that from physics, right? 
Well, let's pretend <clears throat> that these two molecules, which you can clearly see are mirror images, um, that for this guy, the purple tends to, would tend to absorb the, um, or let's call it the magnetic component, okay? Doesn't matter which one. But it'll absorb this. So we start off with our light like this. Uh, the iodine here absorbs some of this. And now our resultant looks like that. We have rotated the resultant here. That's the plane of the polarized light. Well, this is an antimer. The iodine is on this side. So we absorb this way. Our resultant is now this way. This rotates it to the right. This guy rotates it to the left. <clears throat> the only physical difference between enantiomers is the way that they interact with plain polarized light. Now, I said, you know, reaction, um, they undergo the same reaction, same rates and everything. That's not exactly true. If you have one chiral reactant and a different reactant that's also chiral, they will react differently with each other. So, but for simple things, the light is what we see. If we had this guy in solution, ran it through the polarimeter, we would rotate light to the right, and here we would rotate it to the left. If we have an equal concentration of both enantiomers, that means every time it rotates to the right, the next molecule it hits, it would rotate to the left, wouldn't it? And they cancel. So if we had these two guys both in solution, equal concentrations, we would have no net rotation. This is what's referred to as a racemic mixture, an equal concentration of both enantiomers. It's referred to as racemic. Let's go back to our polarimeter. <coughs> of course, there's an equation. Um, I probably won't ask you to do a calculation, but we will do this in lab, so you get to do the calculation in lab. Um, <coughs> alpha is referred to as the specific rotation. Specific rotation is unique for a compound. Um, the little d down here, this is historic. Um, didn't used to use a light bulb, still don't, but um, they used a sodium lamp because sodium lamp, um, you can put out a single wavelength. It's called the sodium D line. So that's with a little d. The actual rotation depends upon the wavelength. So you need to specify your wavelength. Observed rotation, that's what you see called alpha. Your path length, Along with the path length, the more rotation you get. Concentration, to show what an old technique this is, the concentration is in grams per mil. The length there is also odd. It's in decimeters, not centimeters. Anyway, this is how you do the calculation. Alpha over LC uh, gives a specific rotation. Again, that should be unique for a compound. All right, well, let's pretend that we have a chiral center. This guy. The specific rotation could actually be either plus or minus. You can't look at the molecule and predict. How in the world do you ever know what compound you're dealing with? This guy or its mirror image. 
What we're going to do is come up with a nomenclature that's going to allow us to indicate the actual orientation of these guys in space. We're going to do that by assigning priorities. Let's just see how this would work. What if I let this hydrogen be priority number four? Let's do this as one, two, and three. Okay? What I'm going to do is take the lowest priority group and put it so it's going away from me, like it is here. Hydrogen is back. Then I'm going to take and I'm going to connect the other groups in terms of decreasing priority. So we'll start with one, we'll go around to three. If this arc that we do is counterclockwise, we will say that the absolute configuration at this center is S. S stands for sinister, that's left-handedness is sinister. <clears throat> um, so this rotates counterclockwise to the left. This is the opposite enantiomer. Again, I put hydrogen back. Here's the iodine, the bromine, and the chlorine. Now the arc goes clockwise. We will call this R. Counterclockwise is S, clockwise is R. Here's the pair of them. Again, you can tell that they're mirror images. Lowest priority back. Here the arc is counterclockwise, that's S. Arc is clockwise, that's R. So this S and R refer to the absolute configuration. That's the term that we use. The absolute configuration in space. OK. What do we mean by priorities? Priorities are going to be assigned using the con angle prelog rules. Uh, these are worth remembering because we're going to use them two or three times in organic chemistry. Basically, what we're going to do is rank according to atomic number. We look to see what's attached to our chiral center. We look at each of the atoms that's attached, and we say, what are the atomic numbers here? <clears throat> we would then rank our priorities that way. If there's a tie, so let's say there were two carbons attached, one on each side, you would just go out to the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one, until you find the difference. If we have multiple bonds, that's going to count as multiple, so a double bond counts as two carbons. Again, we're going to rotate our structure. So the lowest priority group is going back. Going to connect the others with an arc. If it's <coughs> clockwise, it's R. If it's counterclockwise, it's S. That makes sense, right? Let's start off with some very simple problems. Which of these, A, B, C, or D, would have the highest ranking priority-wise? What you do is you look. <clears throat> so this, our chiral center, would be here at the open valence. Okay. 
This is attached to a carbon. Well, they're all attached to carbons, aren't they? This carbon is attached to three hydrogens. This one is attached to two hydrogens and another carbon. This is attached to a hydrogen and two carbons. This is attached to a hydrogen, a double bond, the number of counts as two carbons. So these two are tied. These two we've eliminated. <clears throat> this is attached to three hydrogens. This is only attached to two hydrogens. This is attached to carbon, carbon, hydrogen. So is this. So that's our tie. Our tiebreaker is what's attached here. This is three hydrogens. And this is only two. And the winner, of course, is C. Which of these is the lowest? Well, if this and this are the higher, here we have a carbon. Um, attached to another carbon. Here we only have three hydrogens. This guy is the lowest. All right, let's look at this as a real, in a real molecule. <clears throat> oh, I guess not. Let's just do this one then. In the molecule shown below, we indicate the substituent with the highest ranking. So here's our chiral center, right? We have a hydrogen. That's atomic number one. So that's going to be our lowest priority. And I put it pointing back. That was nice of me. Look at this and decide which of these is going to be the highest priority. This carbon is attached to two other carbons and a hydrogen, right? This carbon is attached to two hydrogens and an oxygen. And this carbon is attached to three hydrogens. <clears throat> this has two carbons. This has one oxygen. However, Atomic number of oxygen over here is eight. <laughs> Carbon is six. Again, we put our lowest priority in the back because this is attached to an oxygen. It is the highest priority. Doesn't matter how many carbons you had. It's not the sum, it's not the average. You simply look for the highest atomic number. So you tie it at the carbon. This has an oxygen, so it wins. Look at this one. Well, it's a double bond, so that counts as two carbons, doesn't it? 
one hydrogen, two carbons. This guy is attached to two hydrogens and a carbon. And this guy is a fluorine. Fluorine is clearly going to win. This carbon is attached to three hydrogens. It is the lowest priority, and we would put it pointing back. at this guy. <clears throat> hydrogen is going to be our lowest. Here we have three hydrogens. Remember a carboxylic acid has a double bond to the oxygen and is bonded to the other oxygen. So that's three oxygens here. This guy has two hydrogens, one oxygen, three more than one, hydrogen is back, and the carboxylic acid wins. Yeah. Look at this one. Remember, um, the next line actually has it drawn out. But the carboxylic acid has a carbon oxygen double bond, and then the other oxygen, the OH, is also attached to the carbon. So we'll see that in the next one. All right, this guy, we have two hydrogens and a carbon. This guy, we have two hydrogens and an oxygen. This is a nitrile, isn't it? Remember nitriles? That's one of our functional groups. That's a carbon-nitrogen triple bond. That means that this is three nitrogens. The atomic number of nitrogens is seven. This is three hydrogens. So it's our lowest. <clears throat> Even though we have three nitrogens here, the atomic number is seven. Oxygen is eight. Eight wins. So when we look at these, we just better remember like the bonds. Yep. Yep. That's why we do functional groups first. Look at this guy. Here's our carboxylic acid, okay? <clears throat> carbon, double bond, that's a carbonyl, and then the OH. See, this isn't difficult. We can do this. Three oxygens. One, two, three. Chlorine. Two hydrogens and an oxygen. That means our methyl group is our lowest priority. Highest priority, even though we have three oxygens here, the chlorine still wins. Now, just, just to get your interest up, anticipation and stuff, you'll note here, this one and in the previous one, that the way I drew it, I didn't put the lowest priority group to the back, did I? So if I were to ask you to do R and S on this, you would have to do that, wouldn't you? 
Mm -hmm. We're going to learn to do that. Let's rank one more. Now, hydrogen is our lowest priority, and by gosh, I put it in the front. Here we have three hydrogens. Double bond. So this is two carbons and a hydrogen. This is two hydrogens and a carbon. Again, the hydrogen, we would have to rotate to the back. Our winner here is going to be our double bond with two carbons. We rotated to the matter, which, like, you know how the CH3 and the CH2, that's attached to the mm -hmm. CH3. Does it matter which one of those are coming out, or do we have to? Well, of course it matters. <clears throat> you have to rotate it properly. Okay. We're going to practice this now. All right, first of all, let's take this molecule and let's rank our groups. Hydrogen is going to be our lowest for sure. Atomic number here. Atomic number is seven. This is six. This is six. <clears throat> Atomic number seven is going to win. For these two, carbon attached to three hydrogens. This carbon is attached to three oxygens. So our lowest priority is going to be the hydrogen. The highest is going to be the nitrogen. This guy is going to be number two, and that will be number three. All right, so we've done that. We've done one, two, three, four. What we have to do now is somehow orient this so that the lowest priority group is pointing to the back. Now this one is actually very simple. Because if you think about your wedge bonds, methyl group's going back. This is also going back. And these two are coming towards us. This, in general, is referred to as the bow tie configuration, with the two groups coming towards us. The wedgies look like a little bow tie. All right, this is a model of it. Apple back, hydrogen back, and these two guys coming towards us. What you have to do in your mind is to be able to simply tip this so that the hydrogen goes back. <clears throat> when that happens, the methyl's going to rotate up towards you. And these two are going to rotate down just a little bit. That's the rotation. Oops. Well, it's not going to be. There it goes. When we wind up with this, we have these two groups and this one pointing forward and the hydrogen pointing straight back. We could draw it like this. Hydrogen going straight back and all three of them now coming towards us. <clears throat> what we've done here is, here's our hydrogen. The yellow, let's pretend, is hydrogen. And all we did is simply rotate it this way. This is called the steering wheel conformation. So now it's simple. 
right. Our groups, our priorities are one, two, three. So what do we do? We connect three dots. And the toughest part is this clockwise or counterclockwise? No fair looking at the clock. This is going counterclockwise. The absolute configuration here is S. Now that was fun, right? Let's do it a thousand times now. Go ahead, assign your priorities. <clears throat> Hydrogen is clearly going to be the lowest priority. We're going to have to rotate it so it's going back. We have a carbon on each of the others. This carbon is attached to another carbon and two hydrogens. This guy, three hydrogens, double bond, so that's two carbons and a hydrogen. Our highest priority group is going to be this one, then this, then this. All right, let's take and rotate this. Same rotation we did last time. We're just going to tip it. When we do that, the hydrogen is going to disappear back behind everything. The methyl is going to rock forward towards us. And these guys are going to drop down a bit. And we wind up with this. Tell me, is this molecule R or S? We draw our little line, one, two, three. That is clockwise, and it is R. Another one? Now in my bow tie, I have the hydrogen coming towards us. Oh my gosh. Our priorities. Our lowest is going to be our hydrogen. Here we have an oxygen, and here we have two carbons and three hydrogens. Let's just take this and do a simple rotation. What I'm going to do is rotate around the Bethel, around this axis. So here's my rotation axis. I'm going to go this way so that the hydrogen winds up in the back. And when I do that, the methyl group is going to be essentially unchanged, isn't it? This guy is going to swing all the way over to this side. And this guy is going to swing somewhere, this side. A little movie. Is our hydrogen coming towards us, right? What we want to do is rotate it so the hydrogen is back. When we do that, the red ball here is going to swing all the way over. This one's going to swing out this way, and this will be essentially unchanged.
wrong point. <coughs> there it goes. Okay. So let's go ahead and draw this. Again, we put our hydrogen back. The methyl here is essentially unchanged. The isopropyl group has swung all the way over. And this guy has moved over here just a touch. Our priorities, like we said, hydrogen is lowest. Then we're going to do the CH2OH, isopropyl group, and then the methyl. We draw an arc. We are going clockwise. All right. These are old exam questions. Now, I know it would be simpler if all of you had a, your computer on a, an exam with JMOL on it. <laughs> you could just do it that way. This one here, I was very kind, wasn't I? Hydrogen is in the back. Our bromine is going to be the highest priority. This is a, a ethyl groups, so carbon, two hydrogens, carbon, and just three hydrogens. We assign our priorities. Connect the dots. We're going this way. And this is R. Our next one here. Hydrogen is in the plane of the screen, isn't it? We're going to have to rotate around this axis. So the hydrogen is back. When we do that, <clears throat> the nitrogen is going to swing over this way. And, and the nitrile, which is in the back now, is going to rotate around towards the front. And we're going to rotate around the carbon bromine axis. <clears throat> when we do, the hydrogen will be back, and the nitrile will swing all the way over here. I'm sorry, the amino group will swing all the way over here because it's pointing towards us. And the nitrile will come from the back up to where the amino group is now. amino group is going to rotate around this way. This will take the place of the amino group. And the hydrogen is now back. Do your priorities. We have a bromine, we have a nitrogen, we have a carbon, and we have a hydrogen. <coughs> Connect the dots. And this is S. This guy. You know, you can do any way you see it. That's why this is one of the toughest chapters to teach. 
because everybody's brain is wired differently. I will do these things the way they make sense to me. But any way that you can do it that makes it work, yep, that works. On the exam, everybody gets one of these. <laughs> okay, one chiral center. And you can sit there and do this, this, all you want. Okay? All right, we're going to start off here by rotating. <clears throat> we need to tip it so the hydrogen is back. Step one, let's rotate this. Now, what I did is <clears throat> uh, I rotated like this to make a bow tie. Again, that makes sense to me. Put this over to here, move this guy forward. This will be down, and we have a bow tie. Now all I have to do is tip it so the hydrogen goes back. When I do that, this is going to come up, this comes up, this comes forward. And I just have to do my priorities. Priorities. We have a nitrogen, we have a carbon, we have a carbon. We have three oxygens here, we have three hydrogens here. Do our arc. We are going counterclockwise. Do the next one. The methyl here is our lowest priority, isn't it? And, again, being kind, this is pointing back. So all you have to do is assign your priorities and draw your arc. Bromine is bigger than chlorine, is bigger than carbon. We're going to go one, two, three this way. And that's S. Let's do a couple more test questions. <clears throat> These are very simple. Just go ahead and quickly assign your priorities. Draw your arc. Our hydrogen is our lowest. We have a bromine. We have a C with two hydrogens and a carbon, three hydrogens. That's our priorities. We connect the dots. And this is our configuration. All right. This is R. It's a very simple compound, isn't it? We have a one, two, three, four carbon parent and a bromine. You know, we know enough that we could actually name this, couldn't we? Well, let's go ahead and do this one first. Sorry. Hydrogen is back. Chlorine. Two carbons. <clears throat> two hydrogens and a carbon. Our arc is going to go this way. 
and that's also R. Now this one has a double bond. We haven't learned how to name those yet, but this one we could name. So go ahead. How would we name this guy? <clears throat> if we simply ignored the chiral center, it would be <laughs> a 2 bromo butane, right? But it does have a chiral center. We have to tell its absolute configuration. And we're going to do that simply by sticking the R in front. This is going to be R, the butane. We put the R in parenthesis. That tells us that that is the absolute configuration. Again, we have no spaces, only dashes. And this is R2 bromo butane. Let's go back to this. <clears throat> While you're sitting there um, looking at the alkane nomenclature tutorial um, on Blackboard, you'll also see a link to an RS nomenclature tutorial. <clears throat> With that one, you will be given either a chiral molecule, and you write the name, or you will be given a name and you will draw the molecule. Try it. Nice practice. All right. Take this guy. <laughs> Hydrogen is coming towards us. Oh my gosh. What we're going to have to do is spin this thing all the way around, aren't we? Now again, try to visualize this in your head. Methyl group now is pointing back, right? When we spin this thing around, the hydrogen is going to wind up pointing back. The, methyl, or the triple bond here is going to rotate over to this side. This is going to rotate to this side, and the methyl will rotate forward. Do that again. <clears throat> methyl group comes to the front. This spins over to this side, and the double bond spins over to here. Now assign your priorities. We have a triple bond, that's three carbons. We have a double bond, that's two carbons. And we have a methyl group. Connect the dots. And this is R. Let's do it backwards. I'll give you a name, and you get to draw a structure. <clears throat> well, two bromobutane as a simple molecule. You need a butane chain, right? Our chiral center is going to be where the bromine's attached. That's carbon number two. On that, we're going to have a hydrogen, right? Now, you want to be good to yourself 
and start off by putting the hydrogen to the back, right? That will put the bromine forward. So we could draw it like this. Now what you have to do is make sure that what you've drawn is our configuration. <clears throat> A bromine would be number one. Ethyl group would be two. Methyl would be three. Our arc would go this way. This is, in fact, our configuration. What if it wasn't? What if I asked you to draw S? What would you do at this point? Well, I would just simply make this the ethyl group and erase this. Then we would go one, two, three, and that's S. We have decided correctly that these are mirror images, right? If I take and exchange any two of them, any two, they are now identical. Just like magic. So, if this is R, and we simply swap the ethyl and the methyl, that would now be S. Do this one. <clears throat> Looking for S to bromo to chloro butane. Again, the simplest way is to draw it. And if it turns out to be the wrong enantiomer, just swap two groups. That's all. You have an eraser. <clears throat> Here's my chain. I put the bromine coming towards us. <clears throat> Methyl group is going to be the lowest priority, isn't it? So I put it back. Bromine is going to be the highest, then chlorine, then the ethyl. That's that away, and that is S. S, one bromo, one chloro ethane. Carbon number one is the chiral center. It has a bromine and a chlorine on it, and a hydrogen, and of course, a methyl group. Start off with the um, hydrogen going back. Pick a spot for the chlorine and the bromine. Check your orientation. If it's wrong, reverse it. highest, chlorine, carbon, going that away, and that's S. Dealing with the hexane here. So start off by drawing your six carbon chain. In carbon three, we're going to put a methyl group and a chlorine. Carbon three is going to have um, a chlorine, a methyl group. And it's going to have two carbons on one side and three on the other. 
they'll give us our hexane. Methyl group's going to be the lowest priority. Going to stick that to the back. If you draw it and it comes out backwards, simply reverse any two groups and it'll be the correct orientation. Here I put methyl back. Chlorine is our highest priority. Then the three carbon chain and the two carbon chain. This is our configuration. This guy has two chiral centers. To do this, <coughs> we put them both in, and we use the number, no space again, no dash, to indicate the configuration at each. So this is 1R3S. We have a cyclohexane. And they're going to have two methyl groups on it. I would draw it flat. Okay, and use wedge lines. So draw on your six-membered ring. Going to put wedge bonds on carbons one and three. <clears throat> you could start off with them both coming towards you. If that's not right, simply point one back. You're looking for one R and one S. So let's start off just with this. Let's do this carbon first. Call that carbon number one. Carbon one, we want R configuration. <clears throat> Is this carbon R configuration? Hydrogen is back. The highest priority is going to be this guy. There's a CH2. They're both CH2s. This one is attached to a tertiary carbon. This is attached to a CH2. So this is the highest. That's the second. It's the lowest. This is going this way. Oops. Let's don't do those yet. That's going this way. That makes it R. Right? All right, let's look at this carbon. This would be carbon three. We want this to be S. Again, I have the hydrogen back. This again is going to be the highest, the second, and the third. Our arc now goes this way, which is S. This is the, co the correct configuration. Now, if I'd ask you to draw 1R, 3R, what would you do at this point? Simply change this to a dashed wedgie and make the methyl go back. That gives you the opposite configuration. So the one on the red is S. Yep, this is S. That's all. Right. So is this like going counterclockwise? This is going counterclockwise. That's S. All right, here's a cyclopentane with a chlorine and a methyl in one and three. Go ahead and draw that.
Both of these carbons are going to have a hydrogen, <clears throat> so I'm going to start off by drawing my cyclopentane and putting the hydrogens back and the substituents forward, right? This is going to be carbon one, because it has the chlorine on it, alphabetically. Our priorities. <clears throat> chlorine is clearly going to be number one. These are both CH2s. This CH2 is attached to a tertiary carbon, and this is attached to another CH2. So our priorities would be this way. Our rotation is this away, and that's R. Now look at carbon three here and see if that is S. Clockwise. And that's us. Any questions? <clears throat> All right. Look at these guys. I want to know the relationship between these two molecules. Both drawn with bow ties. Our hydrogens are back in both cases. <clears throat> Methyl and the OH are coming towards us. Over here, the OH and the methyl are coming towards us. Think about it. If we dropped a mirror right here, well, this is a chiral center, of course. So is this, this, and that. Okay. So there are four chiral centers. No problem. We drop a mirror here. Let's look at these chiral centers one at a time. Are these and these mirror images? Hydrogen is in the same spot in both, but are going back. This is pointing towards a mirror. So is that. That's what we would see in a mirror, wouldn't we? So this carbon and this carbon are mirror images of each other, aren't they? How about this guy? No. Here the chlorine is pointing towards it. Here the methyl is. We have methyl forward, methyl forward, chlorine forward, chlorine forward. We have this and the hydrogen. These two carbons are identical. Now, you could do this the hard way. <clears throat> you could assign R and S for each of them. If you did that, you would be going one, two, three. That's R. This one, one, two, three. That's S. Mirror image of R is S. But if you just look at them, you could see that. Well, these are clearly not the same molecule, are they? nor are they mirror images of each other. These are what are referred to as diastereomers. Now I said that these two guys, back when they were mirror images, had exactly the same 
physical and chemical properties, same melting point, same boiling point, <clears throat> only differ in optical activity and in reaction with other chiral compounds. But diastereomers are absolutely, totally different chemical compounds altogether. So even though <clears throat> these are um, isomeric, even though they only differ in configuration, they are totally different compounds. Different melting point, different boiling point, different reactivity. All right. Step one, look at these two guys. Within chiral centers. Methyl, hydroxyl, hydrogen, rest of this. Methyl, hydroxyl, hydrogen, rest of it. Same thing here, same thing here. Are they mirror images of each other? No. How can you say that without my mirror? There's the mirror. Hydroxyls are both pointing towards the mirror. On this side, they're pointing towards the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> These are mirror images. This carbon, also mirror images. So you might look at this and say, these are enantiomers, right? But I'll tell you. They're not. Let's change these to little balls, okay? <clears throat> Again, if you look at it, red balls here pointing towards the mirror, red balls towards the mirror, whatever. We would look at these and say they're mirror images. However, I'm going to take this guy and simply rotate. And when I do that, that's on this side, this is on this side, they are identical, aren't they? How can they be identical if they had two chiral centers? Well, that's because this molecule has an internal plane of symmetry. Remember, anything with a plane of symmetry cannot be chiral. <clears throat> this is called a meso compound. Meso compounds contain chiral centers, but they have an internal plane of symmetry. Let's look at it. Here's our molecule. Where's the mirror plane? Right smack in the middle, isn't it? The top half is the mirror image of the bottom half. Internal plane of symmetry, <clears throat> no, uh, it cannot be chiral. Look at this molecule. Does it contain chiral centers? Well, this has a hydrogen, a methyl, tertiary carbon, and a CH2. So does this. That's chiral, and that's chiral. Is this molecule chiral? Does it have an internal plane of symmetry? Right down the middle. The methyls reflect each other. The hydrogens reflect each other. We split this carbon. We have two tertiary carbons. This is a meso compound. 
So the ones we have to worry about are enantiomers, diastereomers, diesel compounds, and identical. Finally, look at these two and tell me how many chiral centers we have. These are all benzene rings. They're all sp squared carbons. Can't have any. No chiral carbon. This, however, these two are enantiomers. They're mirror images. Think of it as a spiral staircase. Here you're spiraling this way. Here you're spiraling this way. Kind of a neat compound. It's called helicine. It's a helix. And it exists as two in antigen. All right, this is a lot. It is. Let's just do some quick practice problems. We'll call it a quiz, even though it's not really, but it will be. <clears throat> These are the kind of things that you might see on an exam or an online quiz. Go ahead and draw these molecules and use a little asterisk to indicate chiral centers. We're going to do these quickly because we're all tired. It's a pentane, so we're going to draw five carbons in a zigzag. We're going to go to carbons two and four and put in methyl groups. We can do this in our sleep. This carbon here has methyl, a methyl, and this. Two hydrogens. This also has two methyls. There are no chiral centers. It's a heptane. We're going to draw seven carbons in a zigzag. We are going to go to carbon five and put in an ethyl group. And carbon three will put in two methyls. <clears throat> so this is carbon one. Carbon three, we have two methyls. Here's our methyl. Doesn't matter that I put the. Doesn't matter, of course not. All right, we have a CH3, CH2, two methyls. That's not chiral. CH2, this guy actually has two methyls on it, doesn't it? Once again, no chiral centers. Octane, we have eight carbons in a zigzag. We're going to put methyl groups on carbons four and five. How many chiral centers here? Look at this one. We have a methyl group. We have a three carbon chain. And we have a branch chain. Yep, that's chiral. This one, we have a methyl, a three carbon chain, and a branch chain. We have two chiral centers. Next one. Quickly, what is the absolute configuration here? How 
Hydrogen is going to be the lowest, isn't it? <coughs> this is attached to one carbon. This is attached to a carbon. This is a CH3. This is attached to another carbon. We're going one, two, three. That's that away. And that away is spelled with an S. Oh my goodness. It's an epoxide. That's a cyclohedron. <clears throat> Everyone's heard of epoxy resins. They have epoxides. Now you could try to draw this any way you want. The way I would look at this, you know, the way it works in my mind, is to say, okay, what if I was just standing on top looking down at it? Priorities. Oxygen, CH2, CH3. So if I stood up here and looked down, what would I see? I would see an arc going that away. And remember, that away is S. Oh my goodness, I put the hydrogen coming toward this. That was so mean. What I'm going to have to do is rotate the whole thing. When I do, the hydrogen will be back. The um, isopropyl group here will kind of be in the same spot. This is going to swing to this side, and a little antenna here is going to swing to the other side. Right? Isopropyl more or less stays where it is. This goes back, this swings over, this swings that way. Now you do your priorities. Well, let's see. <clears throat> this is a tertiary carbon, right? This is also a tertiary carbon. That's a CH2. So between these two, these are attached to CH2s, these to CH3s. But this goes back to another carbon. We're doing one, two, three. This away, not that away. This away is an R. That was fun. Let's do this again. <clears throat> Same rotation. When we spin it, our chain here, it's going to, well, we'll draw it over this way, but it's going to be basically unchanged. This triple bond is going to wind up on this side. This one will wind up on this side. Now our priorities. Three carbons. These are both CH2s, but this is attached to three carbons. And this is going this way. Try the rotation again on your own. The 
the five number ring will wind up here. This thing will wind up on this side. This will stay just about the same. Priorities. <clears throat> Both tertiary carbons. These are attached to CH2s, but these go back to carbons. We are going that away or this away, and that's our. One more time here, just with a big molecule. Same rotation, hydrogen coming towards us again. <clears throat> when we rotate that around this axis, the ethyl will stay down. The methyl will swing over to this side. This is called a sulfonate ester. It's an organic equivalent of sulfuric acid. Um, benzene sulfonic acid just has a hydrogen attached to it. Strong acid. This side, this thing is going to rotate to this side. Methyl over to here. Now we do our priorities. We have an oxygen. We have an ethyl and a methyl. Oxygen wins. And we are going this away, and that's all. Now, we've done this a lot, okay? Let's go back to where we were. What if I simply <clears throat> looked at this and said, okay, well, the lowest priority group isn't going back. It's coming towards me. Right? But, what if I went ahead and assigned my priorities anyway? It would still be one, two, three, right? And if I ignore the fact that this was backwards, I would have an S here, correct? If we move the hydrogen to the back, then it would be R. So, if you want a shortcut, <clears throat> when we rotate this so the lowest priority group is back, this S would convert into an R. So bottom line, if you see a molecule and your lowest priority group is coming toward you, Assign your configuration and write the opposite answer. That's all. Now, why does this work? Remember what I did when I exchanged any two groups? I got the opposite enantiomer, right? So here I'm just exchanging the hydrogen and the methyl. And we get from S to R. Now, if that confuses you, Ignore everything I said. But if you can look at it and say, oh, yeah, I'll just do this and write the other answer, then that's good. Nice, simple one here. We have hydrogen going back.
Whoops. Whoops. Sorry. All right, so there's where we work. Okay, both hydrogens are going back. <clears throat> we have an oxygen that's going to be the highest priority on both carbons. We have two oxygens, <clears throat> and then this is the carbons. For this guy, our priorities would be one, two, three, or one, two, three, right? That is what configuration? It is an R. For our second chiral center here, our priorities are going to be one, two, three, going this away, and that's an R. Is this a meso compound? Looks like it could be, doesn't it? We have a carboxylic acid on both. We have an OH on both, hydrogen on both. But if we put a mirror in between these two, they would be mirror images, right? The mirror images are is S. Therefore, this is not a meso. <coughs> Go ahead. Do this guy. Hydrogens are back. All you have to do is assign priorities. Again, this has meso potential, doesn't it? can imagine a plane right here. All right, our <clears throat> priorities. This is going to be, remember the hydrogen is back. So that's going to be one, two, and three. That's going this way, and it's an R. The next one. Hydrogen is still back. Priority is going to be one, two, three. We're going this away still. And that's also an R. Go ahead and name it now. It's your longest chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's an octane. We have methyl groups in carbons one, two, three, four, and five. If you have yeah. two R's, you have to put two R's or R? Two R's, two R's right. Okay. And you have to indicate the numbers. We have to say in our name, it's an octane. It has two methyls. The one at carbon, one, two, three, four, has R configuration. The one at carbon five also has R configuration. Four R, comma, five R, four, five, dimethyl octane. Remember the simple good old days when we could just draw a cyclohexane and use cis and trans and stuff like that? Well, we can't. Because now we know stereochemistry. Our bottom carbon here is easy because the hydrogen is back. Our highest priority is the chlorine. Then this guy with the oxygen and then our CH2. We're going that away, not this away, and that's S. Our top carbon. <clears throat> we 
have the hydrogen coming towards us, don't we? Now we all know we could just figure out this and take the other answer. But let's go ahead and just rotate it just for the heck of it. Hydrogen is back now. This is going to be one. That's two. That's three. And that is that away. So it's an S also. <clears throat> if you look at this one in the original configuration, that would be one, two, three. That's R. And so therefore it must be S. All right, let's do this. Our methyl groups are going to be the lowest priority, and they are both pointing back. Isn't that nice? <clears throat> so that's going to be our highest priority. That'll be two. That'll be three. Well, let's start with this one then, okay? One, two, three. Connect the dots. We're going that away. And it's an S. Okay? Let's do this one. Our priority is going to be one, two, three. We connect it, we're going this way. And that's an R. Yeah? The only thing that confuses me is the how to integrate. How do you know that I'll take all the CH3? How do you know which one is the second and which one is the third? Um, okay, well, this, they're, they're all three carbons, right? <clears throat> this is attached to three hydrogens, two hydrogens, two hydrogens. So these two are tied. So this one is lowest. Then you say, what is this attached to? Well, this is a CH2. This is a carbon with an oxygen. Oh, okay. So the oxygen wins. All right, so we have an S and an R, right? Oops, is this a meso compound? This carbon is R, this carbon is S. They both have hydroxyl groups. We can split it straight down the middle. S is the mirror image of R. Remember, if it's a meso, it has chiral centers, but the molecule itself is not chiral. All right, just in case you forgot, remember, <coughs> this is on blackboard. This is the nomenclature of simple alkanes. Um, again, you simply put it in. When you get 10 of them correct, enter your name down here, not your email. And when you have <clears throat> done 10 of them, that's 10 points for your exam. Yeah. Does it tell me 10 of them in like the same order? Or perhaps like, 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 they don't have to be the All right, guys, have a. Let's see. Today is what? Tuesday, right? Today's Tuesday? Yeah, today's Tuesday. Good. I'll see you again Thursday. We're going to do distillation. Do you remember our lectures on Tuesday? I don't. All right. All my slides. They stopped. They stopped. They stopped.